everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. And today's session is a from raw to ready session. And today we're going to be taking a look at a portrait editing workflow. In most of our webinars, we usually don't have time to delve into a full editing workflow because we're going into several different images. I created the Raw to Ready episode to uh, explore the full editing workflow for certain images. And today we're going to be working on this image of the, our baby model here. And we're going to be starting with a raw image, going through Adobe Camera Raw, getting into some of the Topaz tools such as Denoise, Clarity, Texture Effects, and Detail. And then we'll also use a couple of Photoshop tools as well for the full workflow for this image to take it from raw to ready. With that, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to show you the layers that have been created here in Photoshop, starting with our before image. Now this is straight out of the camera raw, and you can tell it's very different from what we end up with. But I shot it knowing that I would be um, going through the, my editing process, and I really wanted to make sure that I got a exposure that allowed for me to have a lot of room to go either direction, whatever creative direction I wanted to. So the exposure isn't fantastic, it's pretty bad. <laughs> but going through Camera Raw uh, I, with very little uh, time or effort, I was able to get to uh, this image. So this is after Adobe Camera Raw. I then took it through Denoise, then took it through Clarity to smooth and really work on the skin. A lot of people don't know that Topaz Clarity is an excellent tool for cleaning skin and smoothing it in a very natural way without getting a more plasticky feel like you might get in other programs. It's one of my favorite tools and I use it in every portrait editing session that I do or workflow. Um, and here is after Clarity. So we'll go through that together. Even though uh, clarity is great on the skin, for some of these uh, larger spots on skin or deeper crevices, deeper um, issues, it, we don't want to go over the top and make it look plasticky. So I handle those either through Topaz Clean or even just the spot healing brush within Photoshop. So here's after the spot healing brush within Photoshop. You see those larger areas and patches disappear off of her skin. Uh, then. I'm at a point here where I go into a creative process, and for this particular workflow, I use Topaz Texture Effects, and I applied five or six different effects within Texture Effects, so we'll go through that process as well, and here is where I ended up, and after this, I was really happy with the result, and I just used Topaz Detail to do a little bit of uh, sharpening on the eyes and lips to end the overall workflow. So here is the after, and once again, before. So let's go ahead and open up our image into Adobe Camera Raw. I'm gonna say File, Open, and I'm gonna open my CR2 image, and it'll open up Adobe Camera Raw. And you can see it's that straight out of the camera. And it's a very limited histogram. There aren't any real deep shadows. There definitely aren't any large highlights at this point other than the specks in her eyes. Um, so I'm going to really bring out a lot more highlights and shadows during this process. So when I'm going through uh, Camera Raw, I do very minimal work as far as the creative side. And I really just use it to balance the histogram and then take that into Photoshop and start working from there. So that's what we're going to do here today. Uh, the first thing that I do when I come into Adobe Camera Raw, oh, let me just mention really quick, I have my own personal workflow. And I know a lot of you are going to have steps that you have added into yours or might not be in yours currently. Everything is fairly subjective. Um, so this is something just to show you a full editing workflow of a portrait image. But everybody's going to have their own, and this is just mine, and I hope you're able to take something from it. All right, the first thing that I do when I come into Adobe Camera Raw is actually jump into my lens corrections panel here. The reason is, is I like to enable the lens profile corrections, and any sort of distorting or vignetting that might be happening due to the camera and lens profile, um, I want to reduce that usually. So I just like to click that. And usually when I click that, 
the vignette and darkness surrounding the edges of my image are going to brighten up. Let me show you that before and after. Here's before and after which will affect my histogram. So a lot of those shadows, it, it, my histogram moved to the right towards my lighter areas and it opened up those shadows. So I like to do that first before I try to start perfecting this histogram because that's gonna make usually a large difference within the histogram. So now I'm gonna go back to my basic panel and work here first. I am going to take my temperature and warm this up. It's quite cool. And it was actually quite a warm room. It just came across on the sensor as being a bit cold. So I'm gonna warm this up and just get my own feeling to the image. So here I like 5150. So I'm not really paying attention right now to the numbers themselves, just the overall feeling of the temperature and um, that's coming across. I don't really want the green tint in there, so I'm gonna take that towards the magenta, and I don't really like the magenta either, so I'm just gonna leave that at about zero. If I can get to it, let's just type that in. And now I'm gonna move on. Now I can come down to my exposure, and I definitely wanna brighten that up. So I'm gonna take my exposure up quite a bit here, maybe, maybe not that far, maybe about 0.25. And then I'm gonna take, uh, I'm not gonna work with my contrast because I really like to work with the individual sliders that let me kind of take control of that contrast a little bit more strongly. The contrast slider doesn't give me as much control as the four sliders below it. So I'll leave the contrast slider at zero. I'm gonna take my highlights and whites and I'm really gonna take those up and try to get some nice, adjustments there. I'm going to take that all the way up to 0.6 and then the whites I'm going to push even further maybe up to about 0.5 or 50. Shadows I'm actually going to continue pushing to the right. I really want a light and bright image for my final result and I'm still not hitting um, any sort of clipping on my highlights. So I have a while to go here where I can really start to keep pushing everything to the right. So the shadows I'll take maybe uh, about point or about 40. And then the blacks, maybe I'll just take those up just a touch to open up her eyes. Uh, that's at about seven right there. The rest of the options within the basic panel, clarity, vibrance, and saturation, I'm not gonna touch. I like to work with my color adjustments and my clarity within the layers workflow and taking it into something like Topaz Clarity or really um, working with the color in a different way. So I'm gonna skip over that. Coming into our tone curve panel, I might take the highlights up or Actually, taking them down is working nicely. I'll take that down to about negative five. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it just brings some of that really bright white that's in her eyes down. And now I come into my detail panel, and this is an area where I always stop and make a choice, whether I'm going to do my sharpening and noise reduction within the camera raw, or if I have a heavy noise image, if I'm going to take that into denoise first and not do my sharpening and noise reduction in here. The camera and settings that I was using are up here on the top, or at least the settings, which was ISO 400, which for the most part, usually isn't gonna give me too much noise, but knowing that I was hand holding my camera and the room was pretty dark, I'm guessing there is some noise in here. So I'm just gonna scroll in to about maybe 200. Get to an area where I can just see noise if it's there and take my sharpening and my noise reduction, taking everything down, see what we have. And yes, we have quite a bit of noise actually. You can see it when you go into the image and you can see that there's quite a bit of color noise. And if I take my sharpening and noise reduction or if I go through that process here, I won't have as much control of it as I will if I go through denoise first. And I definitely don't wanna sharpen my noise if I'm not gonna reduce it here. So if I'm not using noise reduction here in this 
I'm not going to use sharpening in this panel either. I don't want to do any color work or toning work in Adobe Camera Raw or add any sort of effects for this particular image. I am a huge fan of that dehaze slider, however, not for this image. And I'm pretty good. I would usually, especially if I have a set of um, images from the same shoot, I would create a preset at this point in the presets panel just by coming down clicking on new preset icon and calling it whatever I need to. Um, let's call it baby session one and press OK. And now I can come back through every um, image that I bring in from this session that has the same type of lighting, the same settings and everything like that and click on the baby session one instead of going through this process. Makes it much faster. At this point, I'm happy. I'm going to say let's open up this image. All right, so this is already a huge improvement over the straight out of the camera image. First thing I'm going to do is, <coughs> excuse me, make a copy of my layer by pressing Control J on a Mac. You can do Command J. And the very first thing that I always suggest you do if you know that you have noise in your image like we do is to go through the noise reduction process. This is because if you continue to manipulate the color and tone and sharpness of anything within your image, the programs or tools that you use are going to look at the noise as detail and it's only going to start making that noise stand out that much stronger which makes it much more difficult to handle in the noise reduction workflow. So go through denoise first. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into Denoise. You are going to get a little sneak peek here of Topaz Denoise 6, which we have been working on and going, planning on releasing later this week, so keep an eye out for that. One of my favorite things about Topaz Denoise 6 is we have added camera-specific profiles at different ISO settings. Let me go ahead and press Reset so we see the issues here. And you can see all the different noise that's happening. Let me show you. Um, here's our luma noise, our color noise. You can really start to see a lot of that color noise coming through, red channel and blue channel noise. I'm not going to spend too much time in denoise here today, but I am. Um, I will start off with my camera's profile and settings that I use. My camera that I used here was an EOS 5D Mark II at ISO 400, so I'm just going to come down there and click on that and see what happens. And it looks like it did a fantastic job. Here's before and after. You can see all of that color noise went away. Let's go through the different preview modes and show the before and after of that particular preset. Let's go into Luma. The Luma is going to show just your contrast noise, removing all the color from the image, really allowing you to check out um, noise that's coming through as little specks. And you can tell over here on the left that we have quite a bit of it, and this preset handled it really well because it's lined up with exactly my profile and camera. Now we're going to go into the color. That looks a ton better. Let me show you the before here. Here's before. You can see all of that color noise in the large patches of areas of tone. And after clicking on that preset, that has smoothed out and really cleaned up. Same idea with the red. Here's before and after. And the blue. Here's before and after. We're going to be having a lot of tutorials on Denoise um, with the release of Denoise 6 that covers the preview modes and the customized presets and our new batch processing feature, which I'm super excited about. Um, but for now, I'm just going to say OK and move on to the next step in my process because I feel like clarity is really where we want to focus our energy um, if we take a time in a certain program. The skin smoothing process is amazing in that program. As we go through uh, the work, or we continue to go through the workflow, please remember I did not resize this image, and I don't ever resize my images until I'm at the end of my uh, workflow and ready to either print or send, get to a certain size for online viewing. I always save the largest file that I possibly can, full layers, so it's non-destructive. All right, that looks great. Let me show you the before and after here. Here's before 
can see all that color noise coming through. And now I've reduced that. And at 100%, I haven't lost any detail. Let me show you this again. Here's before and after. Very hard to tell the difference, but all that noise is now gone and detail has been retained. All right, so now that we've gone through the denoise process, let's get into the next, which is clarity. I'm still going through the technical aspects of fixing certain issues with um, my, my image, not really the creative process yet. And the next step for me, <coughs> excuse me, is always skin. So now I'm going to make another copy of the layer that I'm on, the denoise layer. And I'm going to rename it to Clarity. And take that particular layer into Topaz Clarity. Topaz Clarity is, by well, not by far, but it's just the program I use the most. And I absolutely love it. I'm going to press Reset All down here on the lower right to show you the beginning image so we can start from fresh. We do have a portrait collection of presets over here on the left within Topaz Clarity, which is a great place to start out if you're not familiar with Clarity. But I really want to show everybody today the manual method of going through um, a Topaz Clarity and kind of cleaning the skin. So instead of clicking on one of our portrait presets, I'm going to just open up my Clarity module and start from the top. If you're unfamiliar with Clarity, what it does is enhances the contrast on a very selective level. It gives you a lot of control over your image contrast. Your micro contrast, which is really great with texture, low contrast, which is going to be the lower mid-tone contrast, um, and then your medium contrast, still in the mid-tone areas, and then high contrast. It's really going to focus on your brights and your shadows only. So you can control exactly how the tones are interacting with each other within certain areas of your image. And for portrait editing, the micro contrast is your favorite slider, I promise. Let's go ahead and go into the image a bit so we can keep an eye on her skin. Actually, let me scroll out just a tiny bit. There we go. We're at 50% here. And you can see... Her skin's beautiful. She's a baby. But most of us who have shot babies know there's a lot of redness and, and veins and little splotches that you kind of have to clean up. And that's what we're working on right now. I used to struggle a bit with trying to remove kind of the splotchiness without going plasticky or too smooth. Topaz Clarity resolved that issue for me because what you can do is just take this micro contrast slider down. And it's going to just do amazing things. I'll show you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take this down just a bit more, maybe 0.5-ish, negative 0.5. And I'm only concentrating on the skin, not the eyes, not the lips, not areas where I want to retain detail, only on the skin. So after one slider, here's before and after. And I have smoothed out that skin in a very natural way. I'm still seeing pores in the areas where I want to see pores. And then I've removed a lot of that splotchiness because the micro contrast, instead of being increased, it's that texture contrast that's being decreased. And now I'm just going to continue to maybe lower all of my contrast levels just a touch. That's about 0.15. We'll go to about 0.25 here. For adults or um, for images where you're dealing with subjects that have dark circles under their eyes, this isn't really a great example. But if you find yourself working on a portrait image like that, the medium contrast slider is your friend as well because it really helps with the shadows versus um, the skin color. And it just opens up those shadows very, very easily. I think I'll take my high contrast down just a touch too. Kind of open up everything. There we go. I might take my midtones up just to increase the brightness a touch. Okay, let's see what we've got. Here's before, here's after. Really liking the texture of the skin at this point, and I'm hating what has happened to the eyes and the lips and everything else. Within Topaz Clarity, in each module, the Clarity module and the Hue, Saturation, and Luminance, we have a masking tool for you. And I highly suggest you use it 
whenever you're doing portrait editing and smoothing out skin because usually you're not wanting to um, smooth out your whole image, only the skin. So for this example, here we go. I'm going to open up my masking module and I'm going to invert everything and we're going to mask in the skin. So instead of being a white mask, which reveals all of the edits we just did in the clarity module, we're now going to hide with the black mask all the edits and we're going to paint in to the image with the color white, which is going to start revealing the effects as we layer it on. <clears throat> Sorry about that, I have a tickle in my throat. All right, so by default, the brushes are selected within Topaz Clarity. Today, we're not, or at least within this module, we're not gonna be using uh, the brushes, we're gonna be using the brushes in the module below there. But right now, I wanna show you the color range tool. It's very cool. The color range tool allows you to choose a center point and then change the size of that center point and the sensitivity to the color that that center point is sitting on. And you can quickly build a very precise mask without using brushes or anything like that. So just by clicking on the color range tool, you'll see here in the upper right, a mask was created. As you scroll into your image, you'll see that there is now a green dot in the middle of your image. You can move that green dot around wherever you want, place it on the mask, and that's the color that is gonna be looked at wherever you place it for the sensitivity. I can make it more sensitive, which you see will take out the background and things like that that were coming in. And I can also reduce or increase the size. So I can increase the size here or decrease. For us today, we're going to build a mask that's very precise. So I'm gonna decrease this so it doesn't go into the background at all and press okay. And now go back into the color range tool and continue this process. Really focusing up here in the top right of my interface, not really worrying about the actual, oops, not really paying attention to the image as I'm doing this. I'm really paying attention to the mask itself because that's the most important thing. And if I find that with the sensitivity at one, it's still, affecting areas of the image I don't like. I'm just taking the size down to build the mask that I want. And as you get used to this feature, it usually doesn't take very long to create something great. Almost there. I just wanna do a couple other things here. There we go, I don't mind that it's getting a little bit into the background, there we go. And I'm pretty happy, let me show you this before and after, here's before and after. Now it is definitely on the skin, the effects, but not touching the eyes or the lips and you can tell that because of over here. It is touching some of the lips, so I tell you what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and change the color of my tool to black so I can paint and hide some of the adjustments now and just use a regular brush, normal brush, maybe at a strength of 50, take that brush size way down, hardness, maybe up just a touch actually, come in and go over the eyes and the lips, a little bit of the nose, just to make sure we're retaining all the detail possible. This is actually kind of a soft focused image. So I want to make sure that I retain as much detail as possible. Now that I've created the mask I really like for the clarity adjustments that I did, I'm gonna move into the hue, saturation, and luminance. And this helps to tackle another issue that you're definitely gonna find on baby skin, which is the red blotchiness. Even with the reduction of the texture, you can still see some of the redness coming through in between her brows, a little bit on the cheeks as well. And you can tackle that very easily within your HSL filter and masking tools combined. Let's go ahead and scroll into one of those areas or zoom into one of those areas. We'll focus on the brows right now. 
let me navigate there. Here we go. And what I like to do is take a look at the color that I want to shift, which is the red, and I'm wanting to shift it closer to the rest of the color of the skin. And I like to think about it, okay, what do I need to do to get there? Well, it's definitely darker. The red is darker than the more peachy tone of the rest of her skin. So we need to lighten it, and we can do that with the luminance uh, area. And also, it's definitely more colorful. Uh, the redness is. So we can desaturate that as well. Because the in the hue saturation and luminance filter, it breaks down your image into eight different tones, red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta. You're able to very precisely manipulate certain colors without touching the rest. So I'm going to come over to my saturation and start there and start with my red slider and see if that is the one that's going to help me. I'm not paying attention to the peach color tone of her skin. I'm only paying attention to those little red splotches and taking it down. Now this is going to take the rest of the saturation down as well, so you really have to keep an eye on the area that you're wanting to adjust. Here's before and after. I think that's starting to match. All right, so let me go into the luminance now because I want to brighten it up as well as desaturate it. So I'm going to do the same thing here, brighten that up. And yes, I'm seeing the brightness happen in the rest of it, but we're going to mask out the rest of it. So here's before and after, looking pretty good. I'm going to stop there and go into my mask and start working with that and see if we're at the uh, levels of adjustments that we need to be. I'm going to go through the same process of clicking on the invert to hide all the adjustments and actually paint in the adjustments into the areas that I want. I'm going to be using a normal brush that's not edge aware because with portrait editing you want to keep a very natural soft brush usually when you're working with skin having a harder edged uh, brush isn't usually going to give you the best results. I'm also going to take my strength down and just kind of build up the adjustments versus starting out super strong. Take that brush size way down. All right, three should do good. I'm just going to come over. Actually, it's a little. There we go. I took it down to 0 0.02. Now I'm just going to go into those spots that are causing the splotchiness. Oops, I need to go to my reveal brush instead of my hide brush. That would be helpful. Okay, here we go. You can see on the mask itself over here in the top right that some adjustments are happening. I'm going to take my brush up just a touch. I'm working on just those splotches, trying to bring them to the same level. as the rest of her skin. I think it's doing it. Let's go ahead and scroll out and see a before and after to see the results. Okay, here's before my mask. Oops, that's the wrong. Here's before the adjustments and after. So yes, you can see a huge reduction within that splotchiness, but again, it does it in a very natural way. It doesn't make it look plastic or take it away too much. It just helps with the overall effect. So I'm going to click on a couple other areas within her face that I think could use a little bit of work. Maybe take down some of the redness in her cheeks. Not all of it, just some. And some of the redness in her nose. I'll take my strength up just a touch to hurry the process along here. All right, I'm pretty happy. I would work on this a little bit longer, to be honest with you, um, to really perfect it. But since we are in a webinar, I will continue with the process. But here's before the HSL adjustments and after. And here's before all of the skin editing that we've done here. And here's after. I think it's a vast improvement and it still looks very natural and non-plastic. So I'm going to press OK, get out of Clarity, 
and continue to work on the skin just a little bit using Photoshop Spot Healing Brush. If you're not familiar with that tool, I, I think everybody is at this point, but it does miracles for skin if you just need to clean up a few spots. I'm going to make a quick uh, Control J copy layer here and just say Healing Brush. Come over to my tools over here on the left and click on my Spot Healing Brush icon. And there's a couple areas that still stand out to me, and that's going to be the little orange spot on her cheek over here. I don't want to take away elements of her uh, skin that will always be there, such as freckles or things like that, but this is just like a dry patch, and I know that that's going to be going away, you know, in a week. So I like to get rid of those types of areas. So I'm just going to click on that and as quick as that, I'm able to heal that area and blend it into a nice little patch. There's just a couple other areas I'm going to do. Just little spots that I see that stand out to me. And that should do it. Here's before. and after the spot healing brush. Now that I'm to this area in my workflow, I'm ready to start the creative process. And the creative process is actually a much quicker process usually for me. The technical process of getting the levels right, the exposure, shadows, highlights, things like that are usually a little bit longer of a process for me. But now, let's go have fun. Today, we're going to go into Topaz Texture Effects. If you're not familiar with it, it is a very, very robust program that does have a lot of texture work, but there's a ton of other adjustments in there that you can use to help in your portrait editing workflow. I'm going to make a quick copy of that layer. Say Texture Effects. <clears throat> and take that layer into Topaz Texture Effects. So there are several ways that you can work with um, texture effects. Let me go ahead and press reset. Okay. It's going to usually open up by default into your preset panel here. <clears throat> and if you're working with portraits, portraits, maybe one thing that you can do just to see if it's a good starting point for you is go into the tags way of ordering the presets and click on portrait. If I can find it, there we go. And just start scrolling. Start scrolling down and seeing if there's anything that might uh, really inspire you and go in a different direction than you would have thought of otherwise. Actually, some of these are pretty cool. <laughs> so I might, if I was working with this particular image, I might stop here because this is actually sort of type the type of look that I'm going to end up with. Here's before, here's after. This is the lilac tinge preset. <clears throat> but I do want to show you the manual way of doing these things so you can know how to go in and, and create the exact look that you're after. So instead of starting with a preset, I'm going to come over to the top right and press new. And it's going to bring me into my adjustments panel and allow me to manually create what I want and really customize the effect. To add an adjustment, you just click on the plus icon. It's going to open up a drop down menu. And one of the main areas within portraits I want to make sure that I really pay attention to are going to be the eyes and the lips. So I really want to bring out some of the detail and contrast in both. The way that you can do this within texture effects is by going to your basic adjustment and working with your clarity slider. And that is just a really quick tip if you're um, <clears throat> taking a portrait through the editing process in texture effects. It's really, it's something that's good to know about. So basic adjustments, excuse me, clarity slider, I'm going to take that up to about maybe 0.35, really bring out a lot of clarity within the eyes and the lips. I'm going over the top here and not paying attention to the skin or any of the negative effects that are happening elsewhere because I'm going to be masking it out. I'm also going to take the highlights up, so maybe the whites of her eyes really start to stand out. 
maybe even take the brightness up a touch, okay? And even the saturation, let's see. Not too far up, but just enough to make an impact when we slowly start to build a mask. So I'm happy with that right there. I'm going to come into my masking area, which is at the bottom of every single adjustment you add within texture effects. And for this one, I'm going to go into my brush mask. We're going to go through that same process that we did in Clarity as far as hiding all of the effects and then painting it exactly where we want to. So I'm going to click on my invert icon, and then I'm going to click on my white color so I can use white for my brush color. I'm going to take my strength down to about 30, which will be about 30%. Let's scroll into the area we want to affect. And take my brush size down, maybe to about 10 or so. Oh, that'll work great. And my hardness is fine. Now I'm just going to start building this mask and building it up and really bringing some nice attention to her eyes. and lips. Now if you go a little too far on this, that's okay. Each adjustment also has an opacity slider that you're able to, after working in a mask like this, still go in and take some of that effect out. So I'm not as worried as you might think I should be <laughs> of, of going over the top here. Let's scroll out and see what it looks like. You can see the mask here in the masking area. Let's go ahead and turn the adjustment on and off and see what happened. Here's before and after. That's pretty cool. All right, I like what's happening, but we did run into the issue that I thought we might, which is it's a little strong, especially on the lips, not so much the eyes. I'm gonna go take my black brush now and go over the lips with my black brush to take some of that effect down and then take the overall effect down to about 0.8 and I'm happy there. So here's before, here's after. Some really nice detail and clarity coming into the eyes and lips and then I'm gonna shut this basic adjustment and not worry about any of the other adjustments within there. Now, creatively, what I want to do with this image is really just brighten it up in very interesting ways that you're not necessarily gonna be able to do um, just by doing uh, some work, let's say, within Clarity, by working with the HSL adjustment. Within uh, te texture effects, you have things like split tone, color overlay, which is going to give you some amazing uh, effects very quickly by using blending modes and, and opacity levels. So let's go ahead and do maybe a color overlay first. I want to turn the whole image and tone the whole image maybe a peach color. So I'm going to go to color overlay. It starts off with a white color and in the normal blending mode. So it's going to look like a veil has been placed on your image. The very first thing I like to do in a portrait editing workflow is turn this to a blend mode that I know that I'm going to be using, which is usually 99% of the time it's overlay or soft light. I'm going to start off with soft light here. I like that. It's still a little bit muddy. But I think with the change of color from white, we might see that improvement. All right, I am using Windows here, uh, but you can do the same thing on a Mac. You can use the screen color. For Windows options here, you just come to pick screen color. And because her uh, skin is already peach, I'm just going to use part of her skin to choose my color. There we go. You can also see live previews. I'm not sure if you saw that. As you go over, you can see the live previews of whatever uh, tone you choose, which I love in this particular adjustment module. All right, I'm going to choose this peach color and press OK. It's still looking a little muddy, so I'm going to look at my blending mode one more time and maybe go to my overlay now. Ooh, with the peach, it looks much better than it did with the white. So I'm going to click on my overlay and... Take that up or down just to see the different opacities. I love what it's doing. It's blending it in with, blending that color and toning in a very 
nice way, keeping the contrast there, but still applying it um, so you see a little bit of that peach come through. Let me show you the before and after. Here's before and after. Next, I'd like to add a little bit of texture and color to the background, but I don't really want to affect her skin because I don't want it to be texturized. So we're going to use a texture module along with a mask to achieve that. I'm going to come into texture. When you first open texture in texture effects, again, it's going to look like a haze is sitting on top of it it's because it's in the normal blend mode. And again, I like to just come into the blend modes first to um, get to one of the adjustments I might use. I'm going to stick with soft light for this one. And I really just want sort of a color, one solid color with a little bit of texture for the background. So I'm going to go into my color wash texture category and scroll over until I find one that I like. I like this peach one. I'm really liking the peach colors here. So you can start to see some of that texture come through and that peach color. Let me take that opacity up so you really see that. I don't want that on her face, so we are going to use the spot mask brush here shortly. And I also don't love the texture that's happening, so I'm actually going to take my opacity levels down and jump down to my detail slider, which allows me to either increase or decrease the detail of the texture itself. I'm going to go ahead and decrease it all the way. What that does is get rid of that texture, still allows for the tone and organic feeling of that texture to come through. It doesn't take away all the texture, but it does take away a significant amount. So I will do that for that particular one, maybe increase the saturation a little bit. I'm keeping an eye on the background, not her. I know that I'm gonna be masking her out. So here's before. And after, I like what's happening with the background. And now I'm just going to go ahead and mask her out real quick. I'm going to use the spot mask brush. Each one of our adjustment modules have a spot and a brush mask. Brush is going to be for more precise. The spot mask is when you have one subject and one center point, which in our case we do, and you can quickly mask out using the spot. I'm just going to click on my center icon, which is going to pull up my on-screen manipulation tool so I can adjust that spot exactly the way I want. Just increasing the size. Now I can come in and really work with my transition. I'm going to make it pretty soft. I'm going to leave the color where, actually I'll take the color where strength a little bit down. I don't really want it to be too color aware and the density I'm happy with. So now I'm going to turn my center point off and I'll show you the before and after on the texture layer. Here's before and after. You can tell that it did not affect her nearly as much and it does affect the background. Now I think I'll just do a split tone. I love to do split tones on, on portraits just to add a little bit of purple or blue to the shadows and a little bit of warmth to the skin. And then I'm pretty much done. Let me go ahead and go to split tone. This is a standard split tone uh, type of tool where you have two tones, a highlight tone and a shadow tone. You can choose the color of the tones and then balance them out on your image. I'm going to start with my shadow hue and take it to maybe a purple color and then start taking my shadow saturation up. And then take my highlight saturation and go more towards a warm color. That is a little bit strong. I'm going to take that highlight saturation down. Maybe balance it a little bit heavier towards my shadow tones. But altogether, it's still much stronger than I want it to be. So instead of coming up to all of these four sliders and trying to figure out what settings I want them at, I'm just going to take that opacity slider down itself until I see something that I like. Maybe about 0.45. Let's see. Here's before. Here's after. It's very subtle, but just adds a little bit of toning that I really like in my portrait work. Here's before and after. The last thing that I usually do within texture effects is add one more basic adjustment, and that's just to work on the tones and overall image because what I've done above that basic adjustment has usually manipulated it a little bit in a way that I'm, I wanna just perfect everything. So I'm just gonna add another basic adjustment 
and start playing around. Ooh, so if I want to increase the brightness just a touch, I can do so. Maybe bring out my shadows just a little bit within her eyes and mouth. I like that. My highlights, I think I'm going to go up and really bring out some of those highlights. I'm not going to work on the clarity at this point because if I increase the clarity, I'm going to increase the clarity on her skin, which I don't want to do. And if I decrease it, I'm going to decrease it within the eyes. I really perfected the clarity within the clarity tool and the basic adjustment here in texture effects. So I'm happy there. I will increase the saturation just a tiny, tiny bit. Maybe take it a little bit to the blue side as opposed to so warm. I'm not going to work with my tint at all. Here's before and after. The basic adjustment is a bit too strong for me, so I am going to take that opacity level down. Actually, I don't think it's the basic adjustment. I think it's the overall adjustment is just a bit too strong. So what I will do is go into my overall mask, which is located at the bottom of my adjustment panel. And this is going to be the mask that you use for the overall effect that you've created with the texture or adjustments above. And I'm just going to take that overall opacity maybe down to about 0.75. Yes, I like that better. So here's before and after. I'm happy. I'm going to press OK. And the last thing within my workflow, I'm actually really happy with this final image right now. The last thing that I would do is go in and just do a little bit of selective detail work to bring out a little bit more detail and sharpness within the eyes and lips. And I use Topaz Detail to do that because I can pinpoint the size detail that I want to manipulate without doing all the detail within the area that I select. So let me do a quick, I know we're getting close to the end of the hour, we have about 10 more minutes. I'll do this really quickly and then start taking some of the questions that have come through. If you have any questions, please send them in. And I will be announcing the winners of the collection at the end of the session. All right, so texture effects copy. I'm going to go into detail. If you're not familiar with Topaz Detail, it is awesome. It breaks down your image into several sizes of detail, small, medium, and large. It also breaks down the color as well into all these different channels so you can go in and manipulate that size detail without touching the other size detail in your image. And this allows you to uh, do some excellent sharpening, output sharpening using the small details or creative sharpening, really creating an affected look. I'm going to skip this here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going to press reset all over here on the right. I'm going to scroll into her eyes because that's the area that I'm really trying to focus on. And I'm going to go to about 50%. And for the sharpening of the eyes and lips, I'm going to focus on just those details as I work with my small details slider first. I'm going to take that up because it's going to do bad things for my skin. But that's okay because I know that I'm going to mask it out again. This time we're going to do it within Photoshop, though. So I'm going to take my small details up to about maybe 0.25, maybe boost it just a tiny bit. And I do want to take my medium details up as well, because that's really going to bring out some of the shadows within her eyes. Here's before and after. Super strong on the rest of her skin where we don't want it to be. But when we go through the process of masking it into the image, it'll show differently. So let's go ahead and press OK. And immediately I will go to Layer, Layer Mask, and Hide All. And I'll have a black mask here. We're back to what we had at the end of the texture effects. Now we can paint in the detail exactly where we want it. I'm a big fan of selective detail enhancement. Especially in portrait work, it's really important not to enhance the skin too much, especially in babies or um, teens or anybody who wants a <laughs> nice pretty skin, usually female side. <laughs> um, you don't want to increase the detail because it'll just enhance the um, lines and texture. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our paintbrush. 
I have a white paintbrush for a black mask, and I'm going to take my opacity down to about 30%, increase the brush size, and just brush over the areas that I want to enha enhance the detail. I'm going over the lid line, the eyelashes, and the interior of the eye. Now I'm going to come down to her nose and just click a little bit on her nostrils and her lips for sure. All right, let's see what that did for us. If we scroll out, here's before and after. It's very subtle, but it makes a huge difference in print. Here's before and after. And that's where I would end my creative workflow. I would at this point go through the cropping because I, I like to work with 4x5. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with you guys. Click on the crop tool. Make sure I have my 4x5 ratio. If I don't, I'll just click on it. If it comes up as a vertical portrait, I will change it to horizontal. And let's just move this. I'm not going to do much cropping, just a little bit. Move her off to the side just a touch. And I'm done. Now, this process would have taken about 20% shorter with me just going through this on my own. Explaining it always takes a little bit longer, but I hope that you're able to get something out of this portrait editing for workflow that you can take into your own. If you have any questions, you can contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com, and you can also sign up for upcoming sessions at topazlabs.com slash webinars. I will be announcing some Denoise sessions next week, so keep an eye out for that, and keep an eye out for Denoise 6 sometime later this week. If you're not signed up with our Topaz newsletter, you can do so at our blog, which is blog.topazlabs.com, or follow us on one of our communities, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. We'll be announcing through there as well. If you have to leave us, thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, <laughs> wherever you are.